Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the YouTube channel of JJ Prime Reviews. And today we'll be taking a look at the Transformer Studio Series 86 Core Class, Autobot, Steeljaw, and um, yeah, he's he's eh, he's I, you know, he's okay. He's he's he's. He's an okay toy, but before we take a deeper look at this little bot here, we're going to show off some various images of the packaging itself. Let's get it on, man. Let's go! And here we have Steeljaw, fully transformed into his cassette mode. And, um... Yeah, the cassette mode is definitely the weakest mode out of the two modes that we uh, that from this figure here. Um, now, now the the one half of the cassette mode is actually nicely painted. Got the gray paint going on here. Got some red and black going on here. But the other side is not painted, unfortunately. Um, why they did not paint this side, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It's weird. I I don't know. That is my only real complaint with this figure is the lack of paint on this side of the cassette mode. They should have just painted both sides. They should have just painted this side as well. I, I don't know why they just didn't paint that, but oh well. It is what it is. Um, and also, it's funny how his uh, lion head is just uh, just blatantly visible. The the halves of the lion head, anyway, um, is just blatantly visible. And we come to the other side here. So see, you see, they actually painted these two, but they, they just didn't paint this. I, I don't know why. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It literally doesn't make sense. Got an Autobot symbol right here on this side. And um, yeah, it's a cassette mount. It's a rectangle. It's folded up with a rectangle. That's, that's all he is, really. Um, <laughs> So that's pretty much it for the cassette mode. It's, it's, it's honestly not not all that you know. It's very simple. It's basic. It's straight to the point. Anyway, so let us bring in some other cassettes that we've gotten so far in the '86 up line. And here we have Steel Jaw with some other cassette bots. So basically, these three cassettes from the 86 subline. Um, this is the fourth cassette in the 86 subline. Now, this is the Kingdom slash Legacy version of Eject, but his mold was reused for the 86 Eject, so it's pretty much the same thing, same toy, so if I pass on the 86 Eject, I'm not I'm not gonna miss that miss out that much, but anyway, um, I mean, I would, maybe I could buy the 86 Blaster, but since I already have Blaster, I don't really need the 86 Blaster. I've said this so many times now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, here we got Rumble, Frenzy, yes, I'm gonna call the red one Rumble and Frenzy blue, so that's just me, that's my story, I'm sticking to it. And then we got Eject here, so, um, and yeah, they, they look like a nice group of cassettes. Um, I think Rumble and Frenzy uh, pull off the cassette mode way better than Steeljaw does, because actually, they they are nicely painted, whereas this guy, he's just, they painted half of him. Like, I don't know why they decided to paint half of him, that just doesn't make sense, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. And there we go. There we have Steeljaw compared with his Master Blaster. Yes, that's right. And we, uh, yeah. And I mean, they look pretty good together. They look like a, a nice pair of Autobots. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it, it, it's nice that we finally have a figure of Steeljaw. You know, I'm actually glad that we got a figure for Steeljaw, you know. So that Blaster can have more Autobot cassettes with him, so. There we go, that's pretty much it for the ultimate comparisons right here. Now, Steeljaw does include some accessories of his own, and he comes with uh, the rest of him. <laughs> and I'm, what I mean by that is his tail. Yeah, he comes with his tail uh, with these uh, golden-ish wings right here, so you can... Uh, yeah, there we go, he has that. He also includes an alternate back piece for his lion mode, and this piece is basically for, made for, this. <laughs> it is this big speaker right here, and this is meant to plug onto Blaster's hand, and I will show that off once we get into uh, uh, the, 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 the robot mode for Blaster, and uh, yeah, and, and yeah, it, 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 yeah, it's a speaker. It's a speaker. Um, <laughs> so all of these, all of these make up the uh, 10 US dollars price point. 
sure. Um, <laughs> don't know if that's really worth it, you know? I mean, the speaker, you can take it or leave it because, you know, um, yeah. Um, now, you can't really store these. You can store both of these in cassette mode. I mean, there is a port right here readily available. So you can actually plug in the tail this way if you want to you can you can plug that in there for storage a eh? sure if you it's, it's the thing you can do um but you can also take the uh, alternate piece here you can just plug in the alternate piece right here and just plug that in for storage and then you go you can actually uh, tab in the speaker onto that tab there and <laughs> this is just ridiculous <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous and there you go that is, <laughs> you can store that on Steel Jaw if you really want to. But hey, it's a thing you can do if you really want to do it. Why not? <laughs> so, there we go. Uh, we'll, we'll put those accessories out to the side for now and we will get down into the transformation. Now, transformation on this guy is very, very simple. Actually, no, before we get down to transformation, how dare I forget about this detail right here. Yes, yeah, Steel Jaw can fit inside Blaster. So let me bring Blaster back in and we can test out the fitment inside Blaster. So we open out the tape deck here and uh, let's see if we can fit inside Blaster. So I guess they didn't paint the other half here so that this half can actually be seen through this screen. I mean, okay, sure, why not? <laughs> let's see if we can actually fit inside here um he can fit inside but it's a really uh it's a really snug fit yeah it's a really uh it's a really snug fit wait 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 hold on hold on there we go it's a really snug fit in there there we go and then just close that up and there we go he can actually fit inside blaster it's a really snug fit it's a really tight fit and sometimes he gets stuck in there but he can fit inside blaster I think the things that kind of prevent Steel Jaw from fitting inside Blaster smoothly is, uh, you can see these, these little pieces sticking out. Yeah, those pieces are sticking out farther than usual, so, yeah, I don't know, um, maybe if I can actually cut out those little, little, little tabs right here, because I don't think you need really, I don't think you really need those tabs, so if you can actually cut those off. Then I think he can actually fit inside Blaster smoothly. So um, yeah, that's the main problem with uh, Steel Jaw is that when he fits inside when he fits inside Blaster, um, it's a really snug fit. It's a super snug fit, and that's really unfortunate with this Steel Jaw. Uh, with Eject, Eject can actually uh, fit inside Blaster smoothly, but with Blast with Steel Jaw here. He can't really do that, unfortunately. You have to force him in there, so... Urgh. Urgh. Anyway... <laughs> so... Anyway, let us transform Steel Jaw into his beast mode right here. So just take the these pieces and flip them out. Flip that out, and then bring the two halves together. And they will peg together, like so, to make the lion head. And bring this up like so. And we can take the uh, the legs here, just bring this down and bring that down like so and bring this gun up and there we have one side all done, do the same thing on the other side, just bring this down, bring that down and then bring up the other gun and there we go, there is Steel Jaw fully transformed into his beast mode. Now to add the finishing touch. To this beast mode is that he needs his tail so we just plug in this tail right here and then bring up the wings and there we go there we have the full look of steel jaws lion mode yay <laughs> now isn't that just precious and adorable yeah he's pretty cute I do quite like him I do quite like the lion mode um again Lack of paint in the lion mode. He definitely should have had. He definitely could have had the uh, uh, the the sewer paint on his legs. It would have made the figure look a lot better. But oh well, it is what it is. But he still looks pretty cute. Um, I think he's better than the Siege Ravage. 
<laughs> the way he's designed, I think he's def he's definitely better than the Siege Ravage. Um, now, uh, yeah, it, 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 he's cute. He's adorable. He's he's adorable. Yeah, he just needed me. He just needed a bit more paint in the Lion mode. That's all he needed. But he still has quite a number a bit of paint in, on him. He's got the blue for the eyes right there. He's got the red tongue inside. He's got the white paint for the teeth as well. Got some nice gray paint on the sides right here. Actually, they, they at least painted both of these, so yay! Um, got some nice gold-ish guns right here. And yes, you can actually plug in some blast effects onto these uh, tips right here, which is quite nice. But yeah, I mean, what you see is what you get. You got his tail. His tail doesn't move, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, he's cute. He's adorable. He's absolutely adorable. And let's just compare this with the animation model so you can see what we're working with here. So yeah. So it's not a bad representation. <laughs> so my tongue stops working. <laughs> it's not a bad representation of Steel Jaw in toy form. Yeah, it's definitely not a rep uh, not a bad representation. He just needed a bit more color to break up the yellow. That, that's, all, that's, all, that's all he needed, really. Um, <laughs> so now. As far as articulation goes, uh, it's not much articulation to, uh, to write home about. Uh, you can use this, use this hinge to move his head down if you really want to. But if you use that hinge, then his front legs will move together with it. So, yeah. Uh, the front legs can move forward to move back. Uh, but that's pretty much it there. Um, the, the hind legs can move forward. They can move back a little bit. There we go. They can move back. You can move back some. Uh, you do have a swivel right here. Um, I don't know what that swivel is for, but okay, sure. Um, and also, <laughs> he does have a joint right here that makes his legs go that. I don't know. Uh, let me remove the tail here so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, you can actually get steel jaw positioned like that. Um, I don't know what that serves. Uh, what does this serve? I don't know. I honestly don't even know. I don't know why that hinge is there. Maybe for more articulation. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, this this, fig this figure is supposed to, is meant to be an accessory for steel, uh, for Blaster here. Um, he doesn't have much articulation, but you know, he's a core class, so I'm not really gonna expe expect too much, but I, I think he definitely could have had more articulation as well as more paint you know that, that's my main issues with the figure he just needed more articulation in the line mode and need a bit more paint in the line mode as well and also in the cassette mode so but yeah um so now let us test out uh the the speaker here so you can actually have some display options with your steel jaw here so you can actually remove the tail and you can actually replace it with this piece and just plug that on right there and there we go there we have steel jaw using the speaker which is ridiculous but hey <laughs> it's ridiculous but hey you know it is what it is so let's just put this back on <laughs> and we will get right down to the comparisons and there we go, there we have Steel Jaw compared with the other cassette bots from the Studio Series 86 subline. Uh, yes, again, Eject is from the Kingdom Slash Legacy, but it's the same mold with the 86 Eject, so it's the same thing. Um, so yeah, we have Rumble and Frenzy together. And um, yeah, it's a nice set of cassettes from the Studio Series 86 subline. Um, I really do hope we get more 86 cassettes like Ramhorn, Ratbat, a new Ravage, a new Laserbeak. I really hope we get those in the pipeline in, uh, in in the studio series 86 up line i really hope we get those but, but yeah nice nice set of cassettes they do look good together they do look good together so moving on and there we go there we have steel jaw alongside blaster and eject together and uh yeah they they, they look good together it's a nice family of autobot <laughs> it's a nice family of these guys, yeah, very cool. Uh, I, I, you know, 
it's a cute family. It's a cute family. It's all it is. It's a cute family. But anyway, um, so now that we have Steve, uh, little, I don't know why my tongue doesn't want to work today. But anyway, now that we have Blaster in the shot here, so uh, we can actually remove his gun for a bit here. Um, we can take the speaker and we can actually plug it into his hand. Now, the instructions from Steel Jaw, they don't tell you how to plug in the speaker onto this guy's hand. Um, I'm pretty sure they will tell, uh, I'm pretty sure the instructions for Studio Series 86 Blaster show you how to plug in the speaker onto the hand of, of onto each hand, onto either hand for Blaster. Um, I don't have the Studio Series 86 version, so I can't really say anything. Um, <laughs> so there is a little tab here on the, uh, on the knuckle of the hand here, so, and there is Little, little notch, little, little groove here. So what you do is you just slide it over that tab. And you can do this with either hand. You just slide this on, and it slides in very securely. And there we go. You can do that one thing that happened in the cartoon. So yay! Yes. <laughs> so that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna display. Uh, Blaster with the speaker on to on on one hand and his other hand holding the gun. So I think that's how I'm gonna display Blaster. But if Ramhorn actually comes with the other speaker, then I'm gonna I'm just gonna display Blaster with his gun stored on his back. So yeah, there there you go. That is pretty much it there. And uh, yeah, there you go. And I think we're pretty much done with the robot mode comparisons, right? Yeah, we're done. So there you go. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on the Transformer Studio Series 86 Core Class Steel Jaw. And he's he's okay. I mean, he uh, don't get me wrong. He's a fun toy to mess with. I I do quite like messing with him. He's He's very simple, he's basic, he's straight to the point. I mean, he looks fine in his lion mode, and his cassette mode is not that great. <laughs> um, he needed a bit more paint to uh, make the cassette mode a bit more complete. And the one unfortunate thing about this figure is that he can't really fit inside Blaster very smoothly. It's a very tight fit, you have to force him inside there. So yeah, that's a, bit, a, a, bit, a little bit unfortunate, so I might have to do some modding to get steel jaw fitting inside blaster smoothly um the inclusion of the speaker is quite nice you know we can recreate that one moment from the cartoon where blaster had speakers for hands so you can do that you know sure <laughs> it's a thing that you can do um unfortunately uh the accessories do not Incorporate into the transformation. Uh, you can only store one accessory on the cassette mode. That's all you can do. Um, so yeah. Um, again, transformation is easy. It's simple. It's basic. So definitely fun to mess with. Um, uh, as far as articulation goes for the lion mode, um, he definitely could have used a bit more articulation. That because he could have used a bit more paint for the for his legs here, you know, could have used a bit more gray or silver paint. Would have been nice, but it is what it is. All in all, though, I'm glad that we got a new figure for G1 Steel Jaw, and um, you know, because we've been getting a lot of G1 reissues of this character, and we finally get a brand new mold for this character. So, so yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm happy that we got him. But he definitely could have been a bit better in terms of paint, in terms of articulation. It's all there is to it. So, but he's a cassette bot. He's cute, and I will be happy to add him. And no, 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 no. Let's try that again. <laughs> and I am happy to have him as part of the Blaster family right here. So, now. As far as ranking ranking this guy from a scale of one to five, I think I'm just gonna give him a. Uh, uh, I, I I think he's this. I think he deserves a three out of five. Sixty percent, maybe sixty percent. That works for this character. That works for this figure. Sixty percent, sure. It's fine. He he's okay. 
he's aight. He, he's his aight, so. <laughs> so, I think that's pretty much it for today's video review. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are completely new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, click that notification bell icon down below as well, so that you will never miss any of my future videos. And you can always check out my Studio Series Reviews playlist for any, vid for any videos you may have missed. So, I will post a link to that playlist in the description. <laughs> I will post the link to that playlist in the description down below and I think that's pretty much it for me to say so they have the Transformer Studio Series 86 core class steel jaw and this is JJ Prime signing off peace out till all are one and I'll see you guys next time Rawr. greetings Transformers fans my name is Alita One I would like to thank you for watching JJ Prime reviews if you would like to see more reviews, live unboxings, or even tutorials on the channel, hit the subscribe button and smash that bell icon to get notified when a new video is uploaded on the channel. Thank you, and see you next time. Till all are one.